this was the place. Counseling quickly grew into its own PhD program with a center for training and community outreach. Staffed with post-master interns and those working on the clinical portion of their master's program, the center provides free counseling for students and low-cost counseling for the community, all supervised by licensed professionals. And very few people realize that we are one of only 62 universities in America that has a certified PhD program in counseling, where we have a national reputation and an international reputation in being a center for great counseling. Situated in a safe and beautiful suburban location, the campus was commuter friendly, pretty to look at, plenty of parking. But for some on the East Bank, there was always the issue of waiting on a ferry or the prospect of crossing the bridge. While the existence of the Greater New Orleans Bridge undoubtedly helped the growth of the West Bank, the single span over the Mississippi River was often overcrowded and bridge controls to regulate traffic could make the commute long and unpredictable. Because you never knew what you were going to encounter. You didn't cross the bridge without an article to read or something else because you could be stuck on the middle of the bridge for a half hour. Native New Orleanians have this East Bank, West Bank thing, but to anybody who's from some place like Los Angeles, uh, the rod here is very short. Just that, that bridge becomes a psychological factor for some people. In 1988, relief came in the form of a second span, which made the commute from the East Bank faster and more dependable. Our Lady of Holy Cross College suddenly became a workable choice for many more prospective students. But our population, you know, uh, is from every zip code in the metropolitan area of New Orleans, we have significant presence. Uh, we have as many kids here from Metairie as we have from the West Bank. We have kids here from Slidell, Mandeville, Lafitte, home of Thibodeau, the river parishes. So we're a metropolitan school. As enrollment increased and new departments and degree programs were added, it was obvious the school would need to find space. The convent, housed in the front part of the original building, was still a part of the college. Over the years, the sisters had been giving up pieces of their own space as it was needed for classrooms or cafeteria, common areas, whatever. In 1993, the Marionites made a difficult, self-sacrificing choice. When we gave up the front part to move back to Holy Angels, that was very, very difficult for some of our older sisters. But the decision was made around mission, because mission is primary to who we are and what we are about. They moved out of their home, making room for more students. What had once been small bedrooms became offices, community rooms, classrooms. The sisters were still a major presence on campus and on the board, but this space was now all college. In late August of 2005, the mission of Our Lady of Holy Cross College crossed into new territory. The campus became an emergency operations center. For six weeks, it was a base for emergency responders and state and parish officials. Even the president stopped here as he surveyed the devastation left by the storm. The school itself survived the hit from Katrina, but many of the students and faculty, many who lived nearby, were struggling. He said, look, Holy Cross is here. Holy Cross is reaching out to help. Anything we could do to help. We can't do everything, but we'll do what we can. And for many, I learned later that that message of living out our mission perhaps in a different way than what we do most times, but was still a place and a, and a message of support and help and fulfillment for those going through such trying circumstances. The core mission has never changed here. You know, you come into the school and you see the Catholic identity, uh, you know you know that this is a, is, is a Catholic institution, and we're all called as Christians, as Catholics, you know, to serve one another. The young people coming out have that uh, that, that initiative to uh, not just look after themselves and say, I'm gonna go out and make a lot of money and not worry about the rest of the community. 
and I'm going to go out and share what I've gotten from the University of Holy Cross with the broader community. Well, the mission of the University of Holy Cross is uh, similar to the mission of all the Holy Cross universities in America, and that is to educate the mind, but not at the expense of the heart. And what that means is, is we're trying to create the whole person, not only an educated person, but a person who is also concerned about his fellow man and who is willing to be tolerant towards the diversity in the world in which we live. In January of 2016, Our Lady of Holy Cross College officially became the University of Holy Cross, now reflecting its opportunities in advanced degrees. Ownership of the university has been placed in the hands of the Board of Trustees, although Marionites will always have seats on the board and a voice in the mission. One of the, the quotes of Father Morrow is that, Holy Cross is not a human work. It's the work of God. It will continue as long as it's a work of God. Moving forward, the school remains proud of the past and of all those who've gone before, rooted in the faith that is so vital to its mission. Catholicism obviously is an integral part of, of, of the program at, at the University of Holy Cross. You walk on campus, there's a crucifix above the doorways. Uh, you can walk into the chapel and have a quiet moment of prayer. All of those things, I think, play into uh, our role here at the university to, to help educate the whole person. Because of who we are in the university, we're able to do some things that you couldn't do in other environments. One ceremony we have is called the White Coat Blessing of the Hands Ceremony. Every spring when our new clinical students are about to go out into the hospital to start taking care of patients, we have a ceremony in the Morrow Center. They receive their white coats and their hands are also blessed by our campus minister. So their hands are blessed as they go out to begin to touch and take care of patients. It's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. When you come on this campus, you know you're part of the Holy Cross family, and you know that we know your name, and you're not just a number, and we're concerned about you in particular. So in the Holy Cross family, uh, everybody knows what's expected of them. Everybody knows that they're expected to be disciplined, to be knowledgeable, and to be concerned about their fellow man. To that end, service is built into the curriculum, giving back, helping others, from volunteers who help with educational needs, community counseling, free tax assistance from business students. True success they know comes with service. Real experience comes with each class taught here. Again, part of the success of the university is the, the hands-on learning, the practical experience that is provided to our students, whether it's in the master's program, whether it's in the nursing program, um, or in, in the regular undergrad program. Those types of things are, are what really separates our, our students from, from the rest. They really, they go out into the real world and I think they're equipped, not only from an academic background, but from uh, an experience and practical background as well. The goal at the University of Holy Cross is a well-rounded education of heart and mind. Education that goes beyond the books, learning that leadership is better with kindness, character always matters, and struggles are often blessings. And here, no one has to go it alone. I try to, you know, talk to the students and be encouraging to them and tell them don't give up. Um, things happen. Um, we may not understand it at that moment, but things happen, and if this is what you truly want to do, if you want to become a nurse, you can do it. Don't let obstacles get in your way. You can do it. I often say to students, we'll walk this journey with you. We're not going to lower the standard, but we'll walk it with you, and we'll be right there with you. I could tell you stories that where, uh, where kids have just lost their way because nobody was paying attention to them, and then they just kind of felt the love that we have here, and uh, they felt at home, and again, go back to the word nurturing, you know, they felt like somebody cared about them. Classes are small, personal attention is big. With classrooms and courtyards filled with natural light, 
Even the physical structure of the campus enhances the welcoming atmosphere. You'll never come to an introduction to biology class here that's 200 kids in the class. You know, the biggest class I think we probably have here is maybe 30 or 35. So there's a big difference of not having, we don't, we don't have a classroom that will hold 200. So um, there's no way we could even have a class that big. So you, you always have relatively small size classes here. There's more to it here than just attending class. Certainly students are taught the knowledge and skills needed to succeed, but UHC graduates also understand the importance of confidence, character, and Christian values in their lives. Success is measured both in and out of the classroom. This is a place of academic and personal growth. Like when I came here, really, I didn't know anybody, but when I left, I knew everybody, and everybody knew me, and that was very important. We always had small classes, which again was a big plus, because we felt that we could be like family in the class, and everybody had their personal experience, but we were able to adapt and help one another. One of the things that's very, very strong and powerful about a Holy Cross education is what I refer to as the pride of exit, not entrance. The pride that comes in a Holy Cross education is the difference, the transformation that happens over the course of four or five years when a young man or woman is here. So we can take you here, but we'll educate you so you, when you graduate, you are here. This school has changed. Those who teach and lead have changed. And those who walk its halls and cross this stage are changed for good. We all enjoy is the success witnessed in graduation. And, uh, you know, when those kids walk across the stage and you know them, and uh, you know what they've been through, and you know that they now have accomplished this I mean, we've accomplished something too, but that's a moment of uh, pride that uh, not only for the student, but for the faculty and the staff who's here for them to see them succeed. We're proud of them. Um, they have made it. Um, some students had obstacles. They have made it through those obstacles and changes in their lives, and they have succeeded walk across the stage, get their degree. That is a very proud moment for the school and for the faculty to see them succeed in that. From here, their walk carries the distinction of experience and knowledge that comes with a diploma from the University of Holy Cross. They are walking legacies of generations before them who built and sacrificed, studied and taught people who thought of others before themselves, and now they will leave behind their own legacy. You have to remind people of the depth of the history of our faith, the depth and the history of our people, the depth and the history of the world so that they understand, so that they get a better picture of what the world is really about. Um, and Holy Cross College gave that to me as a young person and it stayed with me throughout my life and I hope that all the students who come here, it stays with them throughout their life. What this is about is about the journey of learning, the journey of the, of the truth, the journey of discovery, the, the journey of transferring knowledge to another generation. Now the school will grow as a university, building dorms, adding daycare, expanding opportunities in sports, all of the special things that come with campus life. 
The University of Holy Cross will continue to offer options for the commuter students, those furthering their education, those who find the accommodating class schedule workable for them. But the future will also be for that traditional freshman experience, living here, learning here, embracing the legacy of a Holy Cross education. Even though as we grow, we know we'll never get big enough to where we're going to forget about why we're here and what we're doing. I think our faculty uh, academically is always looking for what's the next thing we should teach? What's the next thing we should provide our students with? What are they going to need in the 21st century? It's always fresh. It's always being looked at. It's not stale. It's a vibrant living thing. Well, it's not keeping up. You have to be ahead of the curve. Uh, we don't want to keep up with anybody. We want to be in the front of the line, and so we want to lead. And that's what our university is going to do. We're going to lead uh, uh, through the next decades and lead the next generation of leaders into our community as graduates of the University of Holy Cross. In the past hundred years, the University of Holy Cross, with its different names and different faces, has changed history, educating those who help, teach, lead. And going forward, that will continue with new paths and directions. It's a story of dedication and determination, of struggle and success, of mission and Marianites. The University of Holy Cross celebrates its milestones while stepping into a future of promise, purpose, and possibilities. University of Holy Cross, a century of teaching the mind and heart, is made possible by Phyllis M. Taylor, Joseph and Sue Ellen Canizero, Dr. and Mrs. David Buck Landry, Marianites of Holy Cross, the Ray and Jessica Brandt Family Foundation, Scott and Jane Wolf, Philip and Donna Blanchard, Joe and Aaron Caruso, Jerry and Jack Stumpf, Jr., Gulf Coast Bank and Trust Company, 5th District Savings Bank, and by James and Marcia Hubbard, Milton and Susan Lackey, Mike and Terry Lopez, and Ken and Betty Tedesco.